Hello my loves, welcome back to another vlog. This vlog marks the end of an era. That makes it sound like I'm leaving YouTube. I'm not, you're not getting rid of me that easily, <laughs> but <sighs> this is going to be the vlog where I finish this book because I am currently 600 pages into Assassin's Fate, which is the last book in the Realm of the Elderlings series that I have been reading for two years now with Becca and everybody who is part of the Catch Up Book Club. Two years we've been reading this series. It's like 16 books long or something. I'm fairly sure this is one of the longest commitments I've ever actually been in. <laughs> Obviously I can't tell you what this book is about specifically because major spoilers for all of the series within the realm of the Elderlings, but we are following the later years of Fitz, who is a character that we meet from the very first book, Assassin's Apprentice. In that one we see him at eight years old. In this one he's 60, so we've, we've traveled a long time. <laughs> but in the very first book we see him abandoned on the palace doorstep because he is the bastard son of the prince in waiting. King in waiting? Whatever. But his father actually moves away and just leaves in shame. And so he's left to be raised by the stable master until he gets to the age of eight years old when the king takes an interest in him because he realizes that he's in the perfect position to become the royal assassin because his lineage allows him enough of a status to be within the royal courtrooms and such, but not enough of one to be paid too close attention to. So he ends up becoming the royal assassin. And this is also a world that has a very specific type of magic called the skill. And as you read through the whole world of the realm of the elderlings, it just continues to expand and becomes this huge epic story that is just mind-blowing. As I said I am 600 pages into this and honestly there's nothing I can say about this book that I haven't said already about Robin Hobb. Robin Hobb is one of my favourite authors. She astounds me in how she's able to weave together these stories and pack so much emotional intensity into it without being obvious about it. One of the few tabs I actually have stuck in here is actually <laughs> a scene or a conversation that I bookmarked with a post-it note just saying wow that hurt because even though it wasn't anything particularly awful it did touch upon a side of depression that is just so intense to feel and I definitely felt called out by it but it was something that oh it really hits if you have related in any way shape or form. <laughs> so I've already been attacked by this book. I am terrified of the emotions that the last 250 pages are going to bring out of me but I'm going to attempt to read all of those tonight. 250 pages in a night. I have like five hours of the audiobook left. Well I think I'm now on four and a half because I listened to a bit of it while I was cooking food but oh my god. If you know me you know that I can't just sit down for a long period of time. I'll start fidgeting even if I'm watching something that's an hour long so I'm not the sort of person who can just sit and read for ages but I'm gonna be doing it tonight because I'm determined to finish this book. It's currently Thursday and I basically just don't want to take this into the weekend. I'm busy tomorrow evening and I don't want to spend my weekend thinking oh I have to read that book because no one likes a chore, you know? And while I would enjoy the reading experience, I also don't want to be forced to do it. So I'm gonna force myself to do it tonight instead. <laughs> because logic. So I will be spending the evening listening to the audiobook, reading along with it. I think I'm going to turn it into a whole event and I'm about to go to the shops to get some snacks, come back, create a whole cosy setup in this corner. I mean it's already cosy anyway, it's my reading chair, but all of the blankets, all of the comfort, ambience lighting, snacks. I may have a bath at some point. Yes, it's going to be one hell of a reading evening, but I am prepared, or at least I will be once I've been and got snacks. I am prepared and I am scared. <laughs> That is the, the vibe of this evening. It's honestly just amazing to see all of the books and all of the characters and all of the storylines that we've been following for so long come together into one book. It does seem to have the call the cavalry trope without being the typical way of doing that. So it's just fun to be touring through this book and seeing where we end up. But I do get the impression that things are about to get intense. So uh, <laughs> wish me luck.
somehow it's late. This lighting is awful, but it's done. It's done. What do I do now? <laughs> I finished the book 20 minutes ago and I genuinely <laughs> just been sat here in silence. What do I do now? I'm gonna have a hob shaped hole in my life forevermore. Hello my loves, it is now Sunday and I'm hoping to have quite a chill Sunday. I've already been out and met a friend for coffee. I had a wonderful red velvet cake, big fan of that. And now that I'm home, I think I'm gonna spend the afternoon journaling just because I feel like being crafty. So I'm going to do that while listening to music, singing along. We are ending the week right, but I did just want to give you a bit of an update because I did, of course, finish reading Assassin's Fate. I rated it five stars, mainly because I don't think I've ever read an ending quite as satisfying as this one. Seeing everything come together, seeing how Robin Hobb managed to interconnect so many complex stories into one and have it not only make sense but be super satisfying to read as well was just baffling and I don't think I'm going to be able to find another author who can impress me in such a way. Now I will say this wasn't as devastating as I thought it would be. Yes I did cry, mainly because we've been with these characters for 16 books now and so anything that they were saying knowing that that was an end to an era for us, heightened the emotions to an extreme that usually I don't experience. If this book wasn't the very last one that we have available within the series, then I probably wouldn't have cried. And there was a point in the story where had the outcome of that event remained the outcome, I probably would have preferred it because it would have brought out more of an emotional reaction from me. And I can't explain that more because spoilers, but I do think there was a point in this book which would have left more of an impact on me had it remained that way, but the book continued and things were kind of changed a bit. And because of that, I don't think it had as much of an impact, but that is my only criticism for this book. I cannot get over just how impressive Robin Hobb is as an author. Seeing everything come together in this and also just experiencing this with so many of you guys who have been taking part in Elderling Long and joining us for the live shows, getting to chat about it on live shows and just experience this series has been a whole saga and I'm really glad to have been part of it. So yeah, five stars from me, the end of an era. I am devastated to finish that series. And I honestly don't really know what to read next. I do already have a few books on the go. So I'm currently reading Yellow Face by R.F. Kwong. I'm reading this one on NetGalley. I think I'm about halfway through. So I am tempted to try and finish this one up soon because it should be a pretty quick read. I did also start reading The Last House on Needless Street by Katrina Ward, which I've only read 26 pages. So don't have an opinion on it yet besides knowing that this is gonna be a weird one that you kind of just have to accept that you're probably not going to understand what's happening for the most part. So I think I'm gonna try and pick this one back up too, but I will let you know what I end up doing and explain the books when I actually do so. I don't know how much reading is going to be done today because currently I do just feel like journaling and tidying and things, especially because I got some new stationery. So I thought I'd show you some of it because it's very autumnal and I know that you guys love the journaling stuff too. Although <laughs> I went into this shop. So this shop is a tiny independent brand that I really love. I feel like their stationery collection is always changing and I just love looking through it. But this shop tends to sell a few homeware things, some books based in Scotland, as well as stationery, candles, things like that. It's a very like knick-knacky store and I love those kind of things. I will actually link it down below because I think they do deliver. At least they do within the UK, I'm not sure elsewhere, but I'll leave it down below anyway. It's called Curiouser and Curiouser. And I went in today with the intention of just getting some like new washi tape and things, but they were actually having a sale. I ended up leaving that shop a very happy bunny because I got this huge autumnal knitted blanket for £15. These things are not cheap, so I snapped this up. I absolutely adore the colour of it and it's so soft and squishy and ginormous and I just, oh my god, this is, this is me set for the rest of the year. I'm gonna be living in this. But I did also get stationery too, so I'll show you that as well. First up, I got this notebook. 
very plain and simple but I like plain and simple. I got these dried flower like vinyl sticker things which usually I do actually dry my own flowers out and put them in my journals but I have not been finding any recently so this was mainly just a thing of I want to journal today, I want something today and I figured that they were cute. I also got these tiny little note post-its. I have been looking for something like this for a little while now because whenever I'm journaling, so the journal that I have, which is this one, you might have seen it before, this is more of a travel slash places journal, but I do like to list the book that I was reading during my trips. So if I show you an example, this is a page from when I went to Glasgow and here we've got Babel listed because that's what I took with me. And I figured it would be nice to kind of add a little note about the book I was reading during the journey on here and like almost a mini review and my style of journaling and scrapbooking is very much to layer things so I figured that they would be good for that and then just a few more little bits and pieces I did pick up some washi tape in these colours you can kind of see which theme I'm going for <laughs> and I also picked up these two pens which I just thought were really interesting because I haven't seen orange and brown pens without them being like part of a pack before so I was quite happy to be able to find these ones and they are fine liners like super fine liners so they will definitely come in handy for my journaling because I don't tend to use many colours but if I do they do tend to be autumnal colours so it was quite handy for me to be able to just pick out certain ones and use those so yeah excited to use all of those so I'm gonna go and do so right now. filming this update on my phone because I did start doing it on my camera and then it died. It's currently the weekend, I have had a very very intense week and I just want a very chill Saturday to kind of recuperate from that. I have no idea what I'm doing, I'm about to leave the house and I might just go and read in a park, get a coffee, something like that. We'll see where the day takes us. She's finally figured out how to style trousers. Give her a round of applause. <laughs> reading outside thing did not go to plan. I wanted to spend a while just like sat under a tree with my book just 
watching the world go by, but the grass was wet. So I didn't end up sticking around too long, but I did have a nice little wander around. And I actually got kind of emotional at one point because I went to go and get coffee from an independent coffee shop that's near me. And I went a handful of times last year, but I haven't been in months, if not a year. I don't know when the last time I went was, but the person who runs it remembered me. <laughs> was telling one of my colleagues about the artwork that I was doing last year because one of the times I went, I just happened to be drawing in my sketchbook. So it was one of those moments where I, <laughs> I don't know, I've been so in my head recently and not in a good place that I've just kind of been existing in my own little world, not really thinking much about what's going on around me and just to kind of be noticed when your brain is trying to convince you that you are so insignificant. It just really hit me in the feels and I don't know, it was really nice. And I feel like strangers recently have been giving me those little boosts of serotonin because I'm just finding it hard to people at the minute, but the people that I have been around seem to keep surprising me with these niceties and <laughs> I don't know, it's just hitting different recently. Um, and another example that I actually did want to mention is to do with a book that I bought recently because I think it was last weekend I went to Waterstones just to have a little bit of a snoop around, see if anything caught my attention. And there was a girl there called Dana. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right because I keep wanting to say Dana when I read your name on Instagram. <laughs> but I think it's Dana, actually came over to me and said hi, said that she watches my videos and just like had a bit of a chat with me. And that was another moment that like really just made my day because of everything I've just said where, I don't know, it just kind of reminded me that things aren't all bad. <laughs> so I just wanted to thank you for that if you are watching because yeah, small moments and conversations like that seem to be the things that are getting me through at the minute. As dramatic as that sounds, but yeah. <laughs> But I did end up leaving Waterstones that day with this book and I just completely forgot to show you. So I picked up The Creeper by A.M. Shine. It's one that I picked up and just couldn't seem to put it back down again because this one says superstitions only survive if people believe in them. Renowned academic Dr. Sparling seeks help with his project on a remote Irish village. Historical researchers Ben and Chloe are thrilled to be chosen until they arrive. The village is isolated and forgotten. There is no record of its history, its stories. There is no friendliness from the locals, only wary looks and whispers. The villagers lock down their homes at sundown. A nameless fear stalks the streets. Nobody will talk, nobody except one little girl. Her story strikes dread into the hearts of the newcomers. Three times you see him, each night he comes closer. That night, Ben and Chloe see a sinister figure watching them. He is the creeper. He is the nameless fear in the night. Stories keep him alive and nothing will keep him away. Oh, the creeper indeed. That sounds so eerie. And I already love the concept that this sounds like it takes on where if you keep telling the story, it will keep surviving. That synopsis also hits on a whole bunch of things that I already love reading about, such as eerie stories set in small claustrophobic spaces. It usually is a small town or a village or even an island sometimes. The idea of superstition is one that I love and we also have weird creepy child, so I couldn't leave without it. And it is actually also blurbed by T. Kingfisher. So I am excited for that. Sounds right up my alley. And then I thought I would show you this book as well that I treated myself to because I actually had a couple of comments on my seasonal TBR, the one where I wanted you guys to help me choose what to read during this autumn. Because I mentioned in that video that The Turn of the Screw by Henry James is probably my favorite classic, definitely my favorite gothic classic. And literally the day after the Folio Society released an edition of it. This is beautiful. I did have to laugh because a couple of you did comment saying, hey, have you seen the Folio Society edition? And I was just like, I've already bought it. <laughs> but it's in this gorgeous green and gold slipcase. And then if we take it out of the slipcase, look at this. Look at this. And it doesn't end there because it's on the back too. It's so beautiful. And that's not even what sold me. What sold me is that there are illustrations in this book that I absolutely adore the art style for. So the illustrations are by Audrey Benjaminson and they just have such a beautiful, like eerie gothic vibe. Look at that. I love the finish it seems to have on them as if it's almost hazy. And these are scattered all the way through, but they are just absolutely stunning. I saw the preview of this one and this is what sold me. I genuinely want that as an art print. 
It's so, so stunning. This is it closer up. I am obsessed. And as a comparison, <laughs> this is my edition, my, my copy of The Turn of the Screw in comparison. I got it second hand, it's battered, it is falling apart, it has like huge rips in the front and because I wrote an essay on this, while I was so obsessed with it, it is also covered in highlighted annotations and I mean covered, like every single page has something on it. A whole page of notes just in it as well so while I love this because I love having those notes as well, I did also want a beautiful copy of it and now I do have that. <laughs> if you haven't read this book and you're looking for a gothic classic, definitely read this one. It's one of those where you don't realise how good it is until the very last line and then it's just like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> very excited about those two. I can add them to my gothic shelf now. Also just to give you a reading update, I did finally finish reading Yellow Face by R.F. Kuang and I rated it three stars. I took way longer to read this than I should have done, especially considering how straightforward the writing is, like there wasn't anything particularly special about the writing. And I was kind of in two minds about it because on the one hand, I enjoyed it for all of the ways it's calling out so many different parts of the book industry, whether it's publishing, whether it's, you know, the book community on Twitter, whatever it is. It was satisfying to see these things talked about in a space that is more than just like 140 characters in a tweet. And I do think that it was done in a way that kind of reflected how people consider these things as drama. The tone that R.F. Kwan gave Juniper, the main character in perspective, while she was explaining these things, very much reflected a lot of the ways that people just see this kind of thing in general. And it did read just like some petty drama, which reflected the way that that kind of mindset is a problem. However, <laughs> I was somewhat disappointed that it wasn't as intense as I know R.F. Kuang's writing to be because I think this book could have really benefited from having a more comprehensive breakdown of the emotions and the thoughts that somebody would experience going through this because having the effects of social media on your work, on your job, on your livelihood, it has a massive impact and I just feel like this was very surface level, especially considering R.F. Kuang's previous series, which I don't really like to compare them because this is a completely different type of book, but when it comes to writing emotions from a character's point of view, R.F. Kuang is so talented at making that feel so intense and so consuming and I feel like that could have very easily applied to this book as well but for some reason it just wasn't applied and so what is effectively a commentary on this kind of situation was just somewhat lacking for me and instead it just read as petty drama. <laughs> so I was kind of in two minds about this one and it was quite interesting reading from the perspective of somebody who does review books online and sees a lot of these conversations happen because obviously I'm gonna have a different perspective and outlook on that versus people who are just generally online and see it go down without being part of, I don't know, the industry in a way. Like I work in the book industry and I review books online and I also have that perspective as well. So I'm gonna be quite interested to see people's general reviews from this because I feel like as a book for entertainment, it could potentially be somewhat lacking because it just kind of felt a bit cyclical, but I don't know. Maybe it will be interesting for people to see this side of things. I rated it three stars. I did like it, but I just think the topic wasn't really something I was vibing with at the minute. So yeah, I don't really know what I'm going to be reading next. I do still need to finish reading Comfort Me With Apples. I'm literally only 20 pages in. The amount of times I've picked up that book and taken it places with me instead of actually reading it. I just keep like placing it on various surfaces. Every coffee shop in Edinburgh at this rate is gonna have that book placed on it without me actually reading it. <laughs> but at some point I will read it. It will take just one sit down. It's 100 pages long. I don't know what the issue is, but I just haven't really been reading much this week. For now though, I have ordered sushi and I'm gonna go and eat said sushi, so. <laughs> So it's now about half past 10 at night, same day. And I did in fact read Comfort Me With Apples, finally. I just spent a good long while laid on my sofa and you know, actually did it. I ended up really enjoying this for a while. I wasn't too sure about it because I found the mindset of the perspective we're following 
quite tedious to read because she just kept repeating the fact that everything was perfect when clearly everything wasn't perfect and it just got very repetitive very very quickly. However, there was a moment where I clocked on to what was happening and it just suddenly became so much more satisfying to read. Everything kind of fit like a jigsaw puzzle and just slotted into place really satisfyingly. And I did just have a quick look through the Goodreads reviews and it looks like a lot of people have the same experience where it's like the second they realise what was going on. <laughs> it seems so obvious in hindsight but it then made the last section of the book so enjoyable because I was just like this is clever, I like this. <laughs> this one would be a really interesting book to analyse. I can't say why, it just would. You're gonna have to take my word for it, I'm afraid. <laughs> but to say that this was only 100 pages long, I really enjoyed it. I still don't really understand the comparison it has in the front because this is, it's for fans of Gone Girl and Spinning Silver. And I think that from that comparison, it's trying to say that it's like a thriller in the plot, but it's kind of lyrical and fairy tale like in writing style. I personally don't see the comparison to either of those books, but whatever. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. It gave me a little kick of creepiness, eeriness. Glad I read that one and I'm glad to actually find a short story that I enjoy because uh, it's been a while since that happened. But I figured I would wrap up this vlog here because I am just going to jump straight into a new book and since it is the end of a week it makes sense to just start a new vlog. So if you made it this far into the video then leave- what can we leave? What did I even read in this video? Leave an apple emoji for this book. But for now I shall love you and leave you and let you get on with the rest of your day so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did then remember to leave a like and a comment so let me know that you're here if you're not subscribed already then please consider doing so. Down in the description box you'll find the information to all the books I've just mentioned, all my social media and other bookish stuff as well so be sure to check that out if you haven't already but for now I hope you're having a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye!